Earlier this week, I said that problems inside the National Party would be a continuing sore for the Prime Minister, and it hasn't taken long for this to become obvious. Today, in the wake of a very one-sided reshuffle of the National Party cabinet slots, Barnaby Joyce indicated that his vote and that of a number of his colleagues could no longer be taken for granted. With just a two-seat majority in the House of Representatives, it would only take three National Party rebels to break ranks on contested legislation for the government to be defeated. If the rebels persisted, this would either stop the legislation or force the government to do deals with the opposition. You might remember this was, of course, part of the internal rebellion against the so-called National Energy Guarantee that meant it could only have passed with Labor's support, which led to the bill's ultimate withdrawal and the end of Malcolm Turnbull's prime ministership. Now, thankfully, it's not nearly as serious. First, because there's not any internally contentious legislation before the government at this time, but don't forget that Indigenous third chamber legislation, it's on its way. And second, no one inside the coalition wants to see a change of prime minister. While many would like to see a change of Deputy Prime Minister, there's no one, no one in the Liberal Party or indeed the National Party who isn't willing Scott Morrison to succeed. It's precisely because the PM's authority is totally unchallenged that he has to use it wisely. After miscuing the government's early reaction to the bushfire crisis, I really felt he was turning things around and that the recovery was going well. That is until the Nats put their disunity on display and the Prime Minister, not just Michael McCormack, missed an opportunity to both reassert his authority and at the same time heal very real divisions. The fact that the numbers in this week's leadership challenge weren't officially announced lends credibility to the early suggestions that it was a one-vote win by McCormack. Certainly the night before, the Joyce camp thought it had the numbers. Plainly, votes were bought to keep McCormack in his job. Now, I'm normally a Keith Pitt fan, but it said that his vote was up for grabs with the prize of a cabinet slot. And the way both McCormack and Morrison went out of their way to reassure Bridget McKenzie that she could come back before she'd even been gone 24 hours suggests that she too may have been a last minute lure back to McCormack. When someone promises a job to win a vote in a leadership ballot, it's an unworthy bargain that diminishes both the promisor and the promisee. I know it happens. I've seen it happen. But it's yet another reason why the public hold politicians in contempt. People think that too many politicians can be bought not for principle but for promotion. As I said, I've seen it happen first hand. The one nat to act, though, with real honour this week was Senator Matt Canavan. Not only is he one of the most capable ministers or former ministers now in government, Liberal or National, he's one of the most decent too, as shown this week. He resigned as Resources Minister because he was going to vote against the leader in the ballot. Yet instead of acknowledging someone who had done the right thing by keeping him in the Cabinet, McCormack banished him at the same time as he went out in a press conference and claimed that the Nats were, once more, a happy, united team. It's bad enough that McCormack has all along lacked the magnanimity to have Joyce in his cabinet, but to have dumped his next best known colleague as well suggests he's just too insecure as a person to last as leader. And this is where Morrison could and should have done better out of the reshuffle. Now, it is right to say the Nats have plenty of say of who in the National Party gets promoted to Morrison's ministry. But in the end, this is Morrison's government. It is his front bench, not McCormack's. After helping McCormack to survive, the Prime Minister should have used his authority to ensure at the very least the Canavan stayed in the Cabinet. It's this punishment meted out to a very honourable Matt Canavan that seems to have prompted Joyce's threat to play hardball. In the end, Joyce to one side, the Morrison government needs to start to get some runs on the board. Enough of the talk. They've got to deliver. And as I've said before, underperforming ministers must be shown the door before voters 
show the government the door. And I know, I know, I can hear you. <laughs> Labor is worse. I know they are. But governments lose elections and the political animal in Scott Morrison knows it better than anyone.